Hi everyone, I'm Perry. I'm Nicky. Uh, welcome to our second video of the Divine Truth Experience. Um, we really enjoyed our last video, so we hope that you got to watch that. And, and if you didn't, then go check it out. And, it's really uh, cool. Yeah, uh, we, we loved it, we really enjoyed it. And by watching that one, this second one might make a little bit more sense if it's the first time that you've ever come across uh, Divine Truth or anything to do with love, God, truth, and a lot of the things that we're going to be talking about today as well. And also, it may be wise to check out the, the links that we provided as well, just to get a bit of background information of where we're coming from. So today's subject, we've been thinking, it was we really wanted to talk uh, about God. I was, I, was, I was thinking maybe prayer, um, but we, we, we'll, we'll touch on that when, once, once we talk about God. Um, and I know that, you know, this is my and Nicky's favorite subject to talk about. Um, so we're going to explain basically what we want to do is like share our story and our journey of how we've become to love God and why we, we do that and you know maybe reasons why we didn't before and what's changed in the meantime and probably some of the feelings that we can feel how we can progress to want to know God more and basically we're just gonna say how it's been for us and you know you can get to listen and then maybe that will help you reflect about your own journey with God as well um, no matter what kind of path you're on or whatever it's just an experiment really so maybe Nikki you want to yeah I mean share a bit? some things that we may uh, discuss with you could be things that you've already experienced for example or mm -hmm. things that when we say it may resonate in your heart somewhat regardless of whether you believe in God or you do believe in God if you have received divine love or if you haven't received divine love uh, no matter what your background is and your life experience some things may resonate but then again some <laughs> things may not as well so um, we're just going to uh, talk about our own personal experiences with God as Perry mentioned and, um, and just provide you with some examples and experiences from our own life and obviously this, from there the subsequent things we've learned about God and God's nature, personality and the way God is actually. So yeah, um, so yeah that's what we're going to do. Um, so uh, Perry, yeah. I'll start with you mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, what kind of, when was the first time you experienced God properly then? So the first Maybe I can give it a bit, a bit of background. Because when you say God often it brings up a whole kind of worms of what people's idea of what God is. Um, so let me, let me just say, I'm, growing up until I was about 20, I had no concept of, of what God was really. I, ne I never really used to feel about God. In fact, when I used to think about God, I just thought it was just some kind of... Um, way to get people to do stuff to be better um, and I'd heard about it probably from the Christian point of view and I had some kind of feelings about that that you know I, I rejected the whole pretty much the whole idea of Christianity I would imagine so I would never really include God in my vocabulary um, I would definitely say like the universe quite a bit and um, start to explore like energies and stuff like that but I would never use the term God at all really M maybe in passing but it, w it wasn't a strong feeling that I had in my heart at all so it was only until about just to get back to the question about five years ago that I started to contemplate what God is and how that can how, how God's love can actually change my life and that was through watching Jesus and Mary Magdalene's uh, Divine Truth channel uh, which is also on YouTube which we provide links for before and by watching the seminars, I started to get this idea that I could actually pray to this separate entity of God and I could receive God's love and by changing my heart, I would change my life. Because um, I always had this feeling that I wanted to change my life and develop in love and grow in love, but was ki kind of doing it, but then at, at the same time, felt like I needed way more guidance in that. So it was through watching Jesus and Mary uh, present the secrets of the universe that I first started to 
have a, even an intellectual thought that I could develop a relationship with God. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I met you a few months ago, we've started to develop our relationship with friends, mm-hmm. um, and now that's what I do with God, yeah, so. Okay. Yeah. So, what you're saying, it's like, um, just over time, as time's gone by, the more you've experimented with the teachings mm-hmm. of divine truth and just put the principles into practice, the more you've got to know God slowly, Yeah. as obviously time goes by, I'm guessing. Yeah, because a lot of the stuff when I used to watch, um, you know, Jesus and Mary present, they've got a strong relationship with God. So when I could feel that they had this relationship and I didn't, I thought that there was something wrong with me mm. um, or God didn't exist. So I felt like this discord and separation of feeling the truth of what they were saying, but they're not, not actually feeling it myself. Mm. So I had a choice to either just discard the whole thing or say, do you know what? Maybe I'll just experiment and mm. maybe it will just take time. Yeah. Um, and I likened it to any relationship. So in a relationship with your lover, a relationship with friends, family, the more time you spend with that person, you get to know them more. Um, and so I just kept that in the back of my mind, really. I just thought, mm-hmm. you know what, I'm going to treat this as a, f- a friend who I've not gotten to know as yet. Okay. And, yeah. um, and, and, and that's when I started to you know, pray. And pray, basically, for me, is having a conversation with God and um, getting to know God through my heart and my feelings. Yeah, so, so it's not like a... An intellectual thought, is it, about God? It's more of a, a, a longing from your heart. Yeah. That's kind of what prayer, what we feel prayer is is actually, isn't it? We feel it's more of a, just this deep longing from your heart going towards God. And it's all feeling-based. It's not thought-based. So, of course, you know, like you said, you can have conversations with God, but they're not conversations that you would have with other people. It's more conversations about the feelings. It's all feeling based. So, for example, for me, I would say to God, um, through my feelings, how I'm feeling. So I'd be as truthful as I can with myself and God, because God knows what we're feeling anyway. <laughs> so if we can't be honest with ourselves and God, then it's going to be, well, it would be impossible actually for us to even connect with God in that scenario. It's, you know, it's almost like, you're trying to deceive God by not being truthful about yourself with God and God knows, God can already see into your heart, God knows all the things in your heart that are blocking this connection between yourself and God. It's not It's not really us, uh, it's not God blocking it at all because the truth is God's love's just there waiting for all of us to waiting for it, an opportunity for it to come into our hearts and the only thing that stops us is our own choices, our own decisions, and also obviously the it's the feelings we we have in our heart that blocks the reception of God's love, depending on things that have happened to us when we were yeah. usually um, a child, so usually up until the age of seven, and then from then as we've um, as we've grown older and start making more of our own decisions and choices, then all of that's compounded the uh, blockages that we feel in our hearts towards God. So it's a case of almost um, reversing all the damage that's been done and getting to that first causal injury that entered us from a young age and just allowing the expression of that grief or sadness or fear or uh, whatever it could be. And, uh, And then that's where we've almost readied our souls for God's truth and love to come in. So... But let's say, for example, then, if some people are watching and, you know, we talk about God as like our parent or friend, and we, we talk about it as if like we've all, I don't know, it's like it flows us, but quite easily, where some people who, who might be just new to this might be thinking, yeah, but I don't, and some of our friends even still don't get when we say God, like you're having this relationship. And I, I was asked a question, um, I did a talk a few weeks ago, and they said to me, oh, you know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of self-development and working through emotions, and they were reading a book, but the book never talked about God. So, Nikki, 
what would you say is a big difference between just working through your emotions on your own and doing you know self help practices and tools mm. versus having a relationship with God and what the difference is? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, the main thing is that it's almost a case of we're relying too much on ourselves, we're being self reliant. And when you're in that kind of space, it's extremely difficult to uh, involve God in the process just because this injury that all, pretty much all of humanity have and have had since the very first human couple, where, uh, and they're called a man and a man, they, um, they basically um, use their will in a direction against God and um, God obviously gave everyone uh, the gift of free will. Every single person has it. I have it. Perry has it. You all have it. Um, every single human that's ever existed has had free will, and that is a gift from God. Um, then you can see the gift of it, where whereby when you start understanding free will, and you start realizing, wow, look how much God actually loves me. God's not even want God of course God really wants us to love God and have a connection with God but God's not forcing that on us it's our own choice and I guess that kind of shows a little bit as to the actual nature of God and God's personality so when Perry mentioned about kind of going through your own emotions yourself it's really difficult because you, you might not even know if you're going through the the right emotions you might be deceiving yourself um, so for example one common emotion where you almost deceive yourself so you're maybe crying or in grief about um, feeling alone or something like there is a grief whereby if you truly feel lonely then you would have to allow yourself to feel that at some point but there's also a, a crying um, if you're feeling alone just out of almost a, a tantrum that you're not getting attention from people and that's not a real type of grief and with God, if you involve God in the process God can show you the real causes of these injuries that you have within yourself So how, how would you say like, if someone's listening and never come across before mm. and like, like, like for us, what if we say that God can help us like how would you explain like what process happens whereby God helps you and you can feel God's love yeah. versus doing it all on your own? Doing it all on your own. Yeah. yeah. So as you mentioned right at the start of the video. Because if, you, if you don't believe in God, what we're saying actually might be a bit intellectually difficult to understand. So I'm just trying to get the point across of how, how, how do you know God exists to even help you? Yeah. So, <laughs> so, um, Myself, personally, I went through most of my life not believing in God, either like Perry. I didn't, I didn't um, necessarily believe God existed, and I didn't necessarily believe God didn't exist. I was just kind of on the fence. I didn't really give too much of my time to discovering the answer to that question. Mm. And um, as I mentioned briefly in the introduction video uh, that we've recently recorded, um, I just got to a point in my life where I started really examining the question seriously. And I was thinking, wow, what if God does exist? What if God is? Um, what if God is the punishing God that a lot of people think God is? Um, you know, what if God's something else? I just really wanted to know. So mm -hmm. uh, that's when I was led to Divine Truth teachings, and basically what Jesus and Mary. Uh, Mary Magdalene teach is if it's to start experimenting really it's the great experiment whereby um, you you do have to almost go off faith initially you have to take a step of step of faith as such um, to even conceive the idea even in your mind that God may exist mm. and God may be a loving God rather than God not existing or God not uh, or God being a punisher or anything like that so um, you've kind of just got to uh, well this is what happened for me anyway I just went off faith and I was just open to the possibility in my heart of God being well of God existing God um, 
being a God of love, if God truly wanted to love me, love Perry, love everyone else, then it's it's just a case of opening your heart up to that possibility. Because if you think about it, if your heart's closed to anything, no matter what anyone says or does, it's going to be extremely difficult for them to even help you in any, in any circumstance. So it's not just about mm-hmm. God, it's about anything. So let's say, for example, um, you had a set um, feeling in your heart that you wanted a certain type of car and you've got a friend who has got more knowledge in cars. So let's say your friend's a mechanic or your friend's, mm-hmm. um, you know, um, does a car TV show or something like that. <laughs> and your friend, and you talk to your friend, you go to your friend and you start asking your friend, oh, what car do you think I should get? And things like that. And then your friend, obviously, because um, he wants to help you, he gives you certain recommendations and, um, and whatnot. And then it's, if your heart's closed, when you know you, when you started the conversation, you all, you already almost made a decision in your heart about what car you wanted anyway. No matter what he said and all of all of his expertise, it just it won't be able to assist you if your heart's just closed and you just want to want to hold on to a certain belief. You're not open to the potential of a different idea. Um, so. And then ultimately, you probably end up just ignoring his advice, and then getting the car he wanted in the first place, and um, and then obviously see how how that goes. Mm-hmm. So it's all about faith initially, and just um, it's um, quite intellectual initially, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite intellectual initially. Um, you have to go mm-hmm. through a process of uh, listening to the material that Jesus and Mary teach, and slowly over probably a couple of months you start getting quite accustomed to the principles that they teach intellectually and then it's just a case of deciding if you really want to know the truth of it all uh, to apply it in your life properly and then seeing what happens as a result um, and with God of with God it involves prayer so prayer it's um, it's quite it acts in different ways in your heart so prayer it has the ability when you're it's basically prayer is a sincere longing from your heart in the direction of god so it's a it's almost like a a communion between yourself and god nobody else it's directed towards god and it's where you just really want to connect with God sincerely and in truth it won't work if you're not being truthful with yourself um, you've got to be sincere and in truth and then if you pray to God about anything it could be anything you could be praying to God to help you with um, your some a situation in your own life um, a situation with a friend or relationships, relationships. so many work. obviously so many things it can or something be. might happen to you during the day you know you might have fallen and you're like oh why did I fall why, yeah. at that time on that street um, in those circumstances yeah. yeah it could be anything like what Perry mentioned and also it could be the more kind of real deep um, questions you have about God or you want you'd like God to help you answer. So um, my kind of prayers are more uh, these days about um, kind of God trying to show me through the daily events in my life um, the things that are currently within my heart, like the emotions or beliefs in my heart that block the continued reception of God's love. Because um, I'm, I've since I. Um, watch Divine Truth and started understanding it I've kind of just focused on God I've obviously loved hearing all these other truths about the universe and stuff mm-hmm. but which are <coughs> amazing um, but I've just kept my focus on God and I've just I've tried asking God for God's love hundreds of times those times a lot of times when I was asking and I wasn't feeling anything <laughs> Um, it's not like I just asked and it happened. <laughs> I still had to go through a process of experimenting, which everyone will have to. <coughs> and um, 
and also what prayer does as well going back to your your question um it opens your heart up to the reception of god's feelings about you towards you so when you're not in prayer your heart's essentially closed Mm -hmm. but when you're actually praying this strong passionate sincere feelings coming out of your soul towards god and if you think about it anytime you're in that space if you're passionate about anything you're just so expressive and you're just open it opens you up completely Mm -hmm. And amazing things happen normally when you're passionate, don't they? Yeah, amazing things obviously happen. You fast, you have, yeah, really quickly. You have yeah. so much joy, and and with prayer, that's one of the main kind of functions with it that it just opens your heart up mm. to the a response from God, essentially. Yeah. Um, you know what, what I wanted to say earlier also is what one of the things that I learned from Jesus initially was this idea that parent uh, God was my parent. And it took me a while to actually believe that until the, the first time that I felt God's love. And so in, in the beginning, it was just like this intellectual idea that, okay, so, you know, God's my mum and dad, yeah, okay, I've got a soul, God's a soul, I can have this relationship. Okay, yeah, I get that. Um, but like Nikki was saying, when she, get, when she starts to really want to have this longing for God and then you feel God's love for the first time, just a possibility of it, firstly, and then yeah, yeah, and then but well, then when you do feel it, yeah, for me especially, I was just telling a friend yesterday, you just feel all this love coming to your heart. I think I think my literal words when I first felt <laughs> God's love was, "Oh my God, <laughs> this is true," <laughs> um, and yeah, it it just made me cry, and and, and even talking about it now, I can feel you know just like some, some sadness in my heart of just how beautiful it is um, the whole experience and you'll start to learn over time the qualities of God and God's nature so in the beginning it might just seem a bit of like a, a, a concept but over time through prayer and receiving God's love you will start to feel the different characteristics of God and how much God loves you and then you'll go oh, I know what those guys are talking about now once you start to receive it and you're going yeah it does feel like it's my parent yeah it does feel like it's available to me all the time and yet it does feel like I am the only person stopping this relationship but through time and through experimenting and sometimes there's big gaps between receiving God's love it doesn't always happen instantly sometimes there's some small blocks but once once it does hit your heart it's unmistakable and and you'll you'll know what the gift was and, and, and why it came to you at that time and it can be frustrating can't it where You've heard all of this stuff and you want it so badly to be true in your heart. You just want it so bad, yeah. but you're just kind of longing and, some, and it's not happening, nothing's occurring. So there is some perseverance you prob- probably have to go through um, to kind of look at your blocks sincerely because it's not an issue on God's side. Yeah. It's an issue that we have, that we've imbibed through our own injuries over time and... God's always there just trying to help us, trying to show us what it is that's blocking it. What is it within ourselves that's blocking the reception of God's mm-hmm. love? Um, and that's how you can, going back to the prayer, because prayers always work on truth. You might have to start adapting your prayer. So what I mean by that was initially I was like, God, I want to feel your love. God, I want to feel your love. God, I want to feel your love. But because I wasn't feeling it, it means that my, my desire is not pure enough. So I had to then modify my prayer and be like, God, why don't I want to receive your love? Why am I blocking your love? Why? So then I was being more sincere. And then when that happened, then the feeling started to come up of not being worthy. Um, I don't feel God would want to have a relationship with me. And then you started to get into the grief of all those emotions of why you don't want the relationship versus why you think that you do want the relationship. And and then by doing that, you'll start to learn yourself when you're being truthful and when you're not being truthful. And through that experiment over time, you'll join the dots and then you'll know why certain things aren't happening in your life or why you're not receiving God's love. And that's, I don't know if that's the same for you, but I presume yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's the way it's been happening for me. And um, sometimes I can go for long stints of not receiving God's love and being frustrated. Um, and then sometimes out of the blue, I can just be in a really sincere place and God's love just comes in. The Holy Spirit connects. 
that connection it's a mm-hmm. connection between God and yourself and it just it's a soul to soul connection and as soon as it happens instantaneously <laughs> it's an instant um, it's an instant mechanism and as soon as it connects that's when you're in that space with God and God's truth and God's love can flow um, to you but also your feelings go towards God mm-hmm. like God would love us to express our love towards God and due to the, the gift of free will God obviously can't demand that from us God will never demand that anyway because demand is not love but um, it's us um, expressing our love towards God it's something that God can't get unless you want to give it so God jumps on that like if you have any kind of um, sincere feeling of mm-hmm. love towards God God will take that in so quickly and so much it, it means the world to God um, when and, that happens and the Juniki find o- over time your desire for God increases oh, yeah. just for the love of wanting to love God so it, let me give you an answer in the, in the beginning I was quite selfish with my prayers mm-hmm. And I just wanted God to fix me, and that was it. And that was my my main fascination, really. Um, but then over time, I started to think about how I could love God and how I could develop my relationship with God. And that then started to become really important. And I think that's where a lot. Of, I think a lot of people will stumble in the beginning of just wanting to be in it for themselves. Um, but I think I it's, a know, process, it's a process, isn't it? Yeah. I think at the start, everyone. Yeah will have a feeling in them that they want a relationship with God for their own benefit to help them and God does fix you yeah. if you if you want it and if you allow it God will fix you God will clear all these um, dark painful feelings from you mm-hmm. um, but you'll have to help yourself first to want to experience them for yourself and once you do that and take responsibility for it then God will instantly just run towards you and assist in the whole process of letting you go through whatever emotion it could be because God knows that emotion that entered you wasn't from God. It was from uh, either your mum or your dad or your siblings or any other person who was around you or had an influence in your life when you were young. So anywhere between conception actually is uh, from when you conceived to usually the age of seven or eight. So emotions do, these injuries do enter you before you're even born. So when you're in the womb, they can still come in because it's the feelings predominantly from the mum that enter you, but also the feelings, some feelings from the father can come in as well. Um, and these are all errors, uh, emotional errors that our parents have, that all parents have, because no one on earth at the moment is perfect. So um, no child is going to be perfect until obviously their parents first are in a state of perfection. Um, Uh, uh, Or perfect natural love, I guess. Um, Just the, um, the, um, the perfect natural being. So when Amon and Aman, the first human couple, when they came into existence, they were technically a sixth, sixth sphere condition of love and that's the affected human being so um, everything you know you you would do in that state would be or it would be in alignment with all of uh, God's moral and ethical uh, laws and that's how that works you just be in harmony with cre- creation um, but in the beginning you may not know what that standard is until you start to yeah, you won't, start, <laughs> you won't have a clue when yeah. you're creating pain in your life and then you start to discover you go oh yeah this yeah. is not moral this is not ethical and this and this and this and this and that's how through the relationship with God once you start to receive God's love about things you kind of automatically start to do it accelerates everything doesn't it uh, with, if you uh, yeah. receive God's love and you're in a position to receive it and you do feel it you're, it changes you as a person so rapidly whereby if you don't involve God in the process, which many people can, many people do, many spirits have done, mm-hmm. there are now, there's millions of spirits in the spirit world in a sixth sphere condition of love, 
um, on the natural love path uh, where they haven't involved God in the process and they're in a really beautiful space I, I obviously I haven't this is my first life I've not actually experienced the spirit world as such um, properly um, but through what Jesus teaches I feel what he says is the truth about um, these spirits in the sixth sphere condition of love where they're in a really great place it's we can't it's still that great that we can't even conceive the beauty of it on earth it, we can't um, so it also that also shows um, how amazing God is that even if we choose to not involve God in the process we can still have um, a lot of enjoyment in our lives and really um, a lot of happiness um, but even then these spirits who are in a six sphere condition they're quite intellect they're very extremely intellectually developed whereas the heart's not developed as, as much as them, their mind has been and the mind has a certain capacity the intellectual capacity whereby once you get to a certain point you cannot grow further and you cannot experience more happiness and that's where then God, if you involve God in the process and you want to build your relationship with God, that's when then your happiness can then progress from that uh, ceiling or that capping point of the natural love path. And then you can progress even higher and higher and higher and infinitely towards God mm -hmm. through feelings, through, through your own feeling connection with God. And if you think about it, God's love is a feeling. It's not a thought. It's a feeling you genuinely feel and you feel it and it's so real like if you think about it feelings are the most powerful part of you it's not a thought and it's not an idea it's a feeling so you know if you have a thought of um, like I really want to be a footballer or something it's just a, a thought but if you really feel it and you really want it it's more of a passion it's more of a passionate feeling like oh yeah I just really want to be a footballer no matter what it takes I'm going to do it I'm going to do it it's, it shows the difference in the power between the soul and the mind the intellectual mind um, and I guess that's kind of um, I guess the the differences between actually um involving God in your life and not um, and it's completely up to us um, so yeah I mean that's that element mm. I guess and what I love about God now is I remember as you were talking and I remember I was just thinking about stuff and I remember my dad when I was younger saying to me about you know life in general and I was asking questions about you know why do we make mistakes and why is there pain and suffering, or you know, why did this happen? And one of the things we say, they say, look, son, there's not a book that you can go to to learn about life. And um, what I'm feeling now is like, there actually is. Um, and for me, that book is God. And you can go to God, and by having that relationship with God, you can start to learn the lessons of life and how it all works, and what the laws are, and how you can start to live your life in harmony with love and then if you're living your life in harmony with love then it's highly unlikely that you're gonna feel pain probably impossible actually to feel pain from acting from a place of love so what a lot of people do in the world at the moment is that we're living our life from a place of disharmony with love and then we're creating more and more pain and so it's like how, how do you know what love is you know, how do you know what real love is? And, you know, what we're suggesting today is by building your relationship with God and through prayer, you will feel this love enter your heart and then you will know what it feels like. And then once you know what it feels like, you then know what the benchmark is of how to live your life. And you can still choose not to do that and not, not to live in harmony with that love. Um, but you've got the feeling in your heart of what is loving and what is not loving. And by receiving more and more of God's love, you'll understand how to act in harmony in all areas of your life. So then you'll just be creating joy in all areas of your life. Yeah. And then that feels more amazing. So then you'll want more of God's love because you'll want to learn more. Because you'll be like, 
wow, this feels amazing. So I want to learn more. And then that's how it's been for me. Like I just, I just want to learn more. I just want to learn more. So then you pray more. Your time spent with God, you'll want to spend more time with God. And in the end, you know, you'll just want to be connected, which God has designed 24-7 with God. Um, yeah, and it's, <laughs> it's interesting you mentioned that about um, about the feelings you have um, about God. So um, when you uh, were talking about the more you see of God's love, the more actions and feelings you take that are, that are in harmony with God. Um, and you start realising the ones that aren't, you get to a point where you just can't even do it. You just can't even do an unloving action in that area if you receive God's truth and love and God's truth has been written on your heart. You can't physically even like force yourself to do that action just because of, you know how much pain you will feel as a result of that. And it's a choice, obviously it's a choice. Um, you don't have to do that but you start realising that God knows what perfect love is God knows all the truth of the universe so in, in this as an example then Nikki as, as we're receiving God as someone was asking me this question the other day so I'm just putting it out there so it's a bit of a, a gross example but it just shows you once you start to receive more and more of God's love I gave the example to a friend if someone put a gun to your head and said, if you don't kill that person over there, I'm going to kill you. Once you've received enough God's you love and you're feeling, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't, wouldn't be able to do it. You would rather die than kill that other yeah. person. You would you'd rather <laughs> be killed. You, yeah. you'd, you'd rather, rather be killed than killed. Yeah. 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 And that's how that's the level of it goes. Is because when you start to feel God's love, there's less fear. So you understand that you're not going to die. And you understand that if you kill this other person, your soul's going to degrade. So the certain actions, obviously that was a, a gross example, but... Yeah, that's an extreme <laughs> example, it's pretty extreme. <laughs> but, but it often gets it the points across, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, and I, I just want to go back to what you said about that book of life. Yeah. Uh, many people on earth think uh, the book of life is something like the Bible or uh, any other holy book. Um, and they say that God's word is in a book, but... Like, I can tell you for certain that's impossible. How can God, an infinite being, who knows inf like so many things about the universe, how can it all physically even be possible to put in just one book? It can't. The book of life, as I've understood it and feel it to be, it's, um, it's a book of life in your heart. Mm -hmm. It's not a physical book. It's a book of life in your heart. And the more you learn about God and love and truth, the more these lessons of love are imprinted on your heart, on your soul. And obviously the more experiences you have with God and living more in harmony with God's love and truth, the more you acquire these truths in your heart. And you don't even have to refer to a book in the, on earth physically because you just know them all to be true in your heart because of the feelings you have. Um, so that's that's just something I'll, I really wanted to make clear that it's all feelings. It's not. You don't have to study. You don't have. To, well, you have <laughs> it's, to. It's, 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 it's a way of studying, but it's not like yeah. physical studying, like yeah. reading a book and yeah. and almost kind of saying, oh, you don't have to book. revise. Yeah. Certain paragraphs. Yeah. You just know it in your heart that like that's. And it's like yeah. if you read something, let's say for example in the Bible where it says, "I must not commit adultery" or something. And you're saying in, in, in your head, oh, I must not do it, I must not do it, I must not do it. But in your heart, your your automatic feelings are towards other people. And mm -hmm. maybe look, you know, your desire in your heart is impure where you want to actually commit it. And the only reason you don't is because you fear the punishment or the consequences of such an action, so you don't do it. And really what that is, it's almost, you're still living in a state of fear because the only thing that's stopping you is the consequences that may happen to you as a, re as a result. And God doesn't want us to come to God through fear. Um, it, God wants us to come to God through love and truth. So what you're saying is, once you know God's truth about that situation, the love will enter your heart, and then you wouldn't even have it. The yeah. thought of committing adultery wouldn't even enter your head. Yeah. You wouldn't yeah. have to stop yeah. yourself. Yeah. You wouldn't at all. It, you just wouldn't dream of doing it. You wouldn't dream of. You wouldn't have a desire to do it yeah. because 
God's love changes your heart in that area that you receive God's, uh, God's truth in. So um, if you do have these urges yeah. to maybe commit adultery or something in your life um, and you're just kind of suppressing it all in your head by saying, oh, I know I shouldn't do it, shouldn't but do it, shouldn't do it. I shouldn't do it, I shouldn't do it, but I really want to and want to. There'll probably become a point in the future where you do end up doing it because that is the feeling and the feelings yeah. are more dominant and powerful yeah. over a mind idea. You can uh, be manipulated. Idea. Yeah, and you can easily be manipulated in that space. Yeah. But once God's love has worked on your soul in that area, then the causes of such a, um, an unloving action are all, like they're automatically removed from your soul. So that urge is gone and you don't have it. Yeah. Forever. Forever. That's what I love about it. Like it's forever. Like a lot of the stuff that I've done, a lot of the healing work in the past would be like temporary fixes and then they would still come up later. But once you start to feel, feel God's love in your heart and it changes your soul, it's like that pain has gone forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And obviously I, I, I don't remember my sleep state, so I don't know what I'm like in the spirit world. So I... I'm a little bit curious to see what happens when I die and see the changes that have happened and be able to look back in my life and reflect. I can do it now, obviously, and see how I've changed over the years. Uh, but I'm kind of a little bit curious to see what happens when you pass over and you can see... It's when you hit the, the point of recollection, isn't it? I, I read in... Uh, is that, is that I think in, in Through the Mists, a book by R.J. Lees, where um, Fred, or Afro, the spirit... He talks about a point in the spirit world after you've passed where um, you've progressed to a certain point and you basically touch a point of recollection where you remember everything that's happened in your life and even your life uh, in, this, in the sleep state. So all your experiences when you're asleep on earth, so your physical body is resting, but your spirit body has then been interacting in the spirit world in the sleep state so you'll remember all of those as well so that that's something i'm really looking forward to uh experiencing because i feel it would be amazing um just to know exactly all the stuff that you've done ever um i think that'd be really cool um but like i think something i'll probably uh like to do is just talk to you more about our personal experiences and what we felt about God and the stuff we have come to know for certain about God. Um, so, just to give you um, a brief overview of the first time I experienced and received God's love, it was um, after five months of listening to Divine Truth teachings and intellectually, as we mentioned earlier, going through the process of understanding uh, principles in our mind. Um, I then obviously decided to um, start experimenting with them in my day-to-day -day life and seeing what happened. And um, I started seeing that the more I was in truth, the more of my own fears started coming up naturally. And it was just a case of letting myself say the truth anyway of how I'm feeling or the truth of the situation and then just letting myself uh, see the response that I get as a result. So many of those experiences happened. And I just got to a point after five months where I just said to myself, and I said to God as well, I just said, God, I've been listening to this man, AJ and Mary, for five months. Everything they say, I just feel it to be true. I just feel it to be true. I don't know why. Um, and what I want now so badly is I just want to know the truth of the whole situation. I want to know for certain that God, you exist. I want to know for certain whether God, you are a God of love. I want to know for certain if AJ is Jesus, as he says he is. I want to know for certain that Mary is Mary Magdalene, as she says she is. And it was one Saturday night, I remember it so clearly, um, I was... I shut myself in my bedroom and, I was, um, and earlier that day I just kept seeing the word meditation everywhere and um, I wasn't uh, meditating as such, I just got myself into a quiet space where I was relaxed, I was comfortable and I just sat on the end of my bed and I said, I remember my prayer, 
I said to God, I said, God, if you are God of love, God, if you exist, if AJ is Jesus, if Mary is Mary Magdalene, and if this love is possible, I'd just love to receive it. And as soon as I said those, well, had those feelings towards God and my passionate desire to want to know the answers for to those questions, I instantly start feeling this inflowing of, oh, I can't even explain it. It's mm. just this inflowing of just this raw, powerful, uh, completely overwhelming energy um, because all emotions are energy, essentially. There's different types of energy. So I just start feeling this intense rush of energy just entering me and coming from an outside source straight into me. Um, and as soon as it started entering me, I couldn't, I, I couldn't handle it. I just started, I just was overwhelmed with emotion. I was crying and crying and crying and crying. And it was a mixture of just happy crying and sad crying. Um, it was a mix of uh, both. And I was just feeling it, and I was, and I let my, I, I let this experience just take me over for 20 minutes. I was just fully in the moment and being humble to the situation. And I, as I was crying and feeling sadness, I was thinking, I was like getting all these realizations that were happening at the same time. I was like, oh my goodness, H H G. And I was crying, and I was like, oh my goodness, me, me, Magdalene. Oh my goodness, God, God actually is real. God exists. God loves me. God is my parent. God is my parent. And just all these realizations just started coming, like in this in this experience I was having, and after twenty minutes, snot all over me, <laughs> just everywhere. Um, I was just like, wow, and I was just so shell shocked at what happened. I, I couldn't believe what actually happened and how amazing it was and how perfect it was. And straight away, I just felt this peace in my heart. Straight away, as soon as the experience ended, I felt this peace in my heart. And my heart was so soft. Mm. It was so soft. Um, and that's one of the um, phrases or words in the Bible where it says um, something along the lines of, turn the uh, God will turn stone. your heart of stone into a heart of flesh. And I experienced that as a fact, as a truth. Um, and I realized just even receiving God's love once, how much that love softened my heart from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh. So a real feeling heart, the one that seeks truth, one that wants love, one that wants to give love, one that wants to assist others. And uh, I felt that all to be true in that one experience. Um, and the great thing is every time I've received God's love and I've had a big experience with it, I've the next day or two after that, it's just the most amazing feeling. You just have this peace in your heart that you carry around with you and the things that usually kind of bother you on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, these little tiny things, they just don't affect you at all in those couple of days after you receive God's love and you're in this amazing space. You start um, looking at certain the creations of God so I know with me um, sometimes after I receive God's love I just love to go for a walk in nature and I was you know like I look at a tree and I think how amazing the, the creation of the tree is and the, the benefits of a tree what the tree does for the environment the tree gives us gives us the air to breathe so our human body can survive on earth it gives us the oxygen that we need and all these other beautiful things of a tree the fruit that trees can produce um, you know, one is, is almost the abundance of the creation. So one tree can produce thousands of different pieces of fruit, um, and seeing like the birds in the sky. Um, and, what, and what about Nikki? The, um, the 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 feeling of God's love is actually a gift. For one reason is that like yeah. I remember I was I was seeing Nikki before I met him on one of the assistance groups on YouTube, and he said one of the one of the things which amazed me, and it made me smile. Before we knew each other. Yeah, it made me smile when he said it. It's the, what's one of the things that happens when you receive God's love. And often what will happen is like it feels like you're praying for one thing, 
but then you'll just receive so much more. So much more. <laughs> so, <laughs> so much the, more. The thing that you thought you were praying for, like you kind of that was kind of almost secondary in the yeah, end. Yeah. And it's like God's love knows what the real cause of the sadness was. And then it's like, oh my God, you actually thought about that as well. And you And God wants to give us that <laughs> as well. And you, you end up receiving way more way than you bargained for. Way more than you asked for. Way more. It's the, it's amazing. Yeah. And that and that, that when that happened to me when I had that realisation. I just cried even more because you just then start to feel how thoughtful and kind God is um, in taking care of you. Yeah, and it's amazing. <laughs> like Jesus said to me in that video when I went to Australia last year to an assistance group, he said to me when I said that to him, he came up with a very logical uh, response back to me. He says, "Well, think about it. If you know you're you're in a relationship with a girl and um, you really love her." You want to make her breakfast when she has an after it. You want to give her all, you know, all, all these other things because you love her and you want to do that for her out of the love you have. And God is like that with us, but God's more. It's God is more powerful with that than we can be because yeah. God is God. God is our parent. God knows what perfect love is. God knows what perfect truth is. God knows us perfectly. Perfectly, God knows exactly the things that we would love to receive from God and any time more, more, more than, than we do yeah, more than we do ourselves and yeah. so it's, it's almost like it's a big surprise. when your heart's opened a tiny bit to God so you've taken one step out in, into the wilderness as such um, and you take one step towards God and it's almost like God just rushes to towards you God as soon as God can mm. sniff the tiniest opportunity to connect with you properly and um, and give you some of God's love, the feelings of love that God has towards you, God will jump at that opportunity instantly, and it's an instant thing. As soon as there's a cracking of um, uh, a, a, a pure, sincere desire in your heart, God will run to that and give you as yeah. much as God can possibly fit in. And I, I've, I found, through my experience of receiving God's love, was that the speed at which it happened of, of, of feeling the love come into my heart before I'd even finished my prayer the love was coming in so it made me realize that God even knew that I was going to pray that prayer at that time and was already setting everything in place to respond for me to go into that emotion and feel the love and that for me even saying it now makes me well up because it just shows you how much care God had in place for you to, to help you go through some of these emotions and want to feel God's love. It's like, that's how ready God is to want to be a part of your life. And the, the sadness for me was like, you know, I'm not that ready. Like, I prefer not to <laughs> feel that. But once you experience it, and then you, 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 you know that God must have been there before you even started your prayer. It's, it's just so overwhelming and beautiful. I can't wait for you to experience it. And if you have already, then you'll know what I mean. Yeah, you'll yeah. know exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> but um, it's when you receive God's love, you start coming to all these realizations and all this sadness starts coming up in your heart about things you thought were true when you were younger and uh, yeah. all these concepts about love that you had and you start, you start realizing that they weren't true and all this pain that you feel that is due to the errors, so the untruth that has entered us from when we were conceived onwards. And once you start realizing that what real love is, because God's love is the real love, it's perfect love, once you start realizing that properly in your heart, mm. automatically this sadness comes up. And if you let yourself just grieve the sadness, then more of God's love can come in and the more God can show you things about yourself, about God, about the universe that you've completely, you know, you never knew was possible really. Um, like one amazing time I received God's love was when I, um, I was going through some grief about... Um, like some realizations about the way my mum treated me um, in terms of it, it was no physical abuse but it was um, it was where if 
like my mum would only make me feel loved and special if I almost did the stuff that she wanted me to do and I was feeling I got to quite a lot of sadness about the grief I um, I felt at that um, and the sadness and the feeling of like I was I've, I've been growing up to believe that women are more superior than men women are more superior than me like I I've grown up believing that lo real love is that I should do whatever a woman asks of me, and if I don't, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> I either, you know, get anger at, at me, given <clears throat> back at me, or I get this, which is I feel worse. This withdrawal, withdrawal. Uh, I can't even say it. This withdrawal of love. So, like this passive aggressive kind of feeling that um, because I didn't do something that mum my mum wanted me to do a feeling that she wanted me to give to her then I didn't feel loved and so my whole life I've kind of taken that injury on and it's affected all my relationships with with girls um, I've only ever had one real relationship uh, and that lasted for, for like five and a half years um, and I've still got sadness about it now because I'm, I can feel it um, and I can I could have let myself cry more about it just now, but um, I I kind of want to explain it more to to you. Um, but once I was letting myself feel the sadness of it and the feeling of being used and manipulated, um, and realizing that God's not like that. God knows that women are as equal to men as men are to women. We're completely equal. Um, and truth or by remaining in truth it's almost like you're opening yourself up to receiving all of this anger back at you just for being more in harmony with God and it's just about letting yourself grieve all of that uh, and the unfairness of it all um, and it was amazing because I was, as I was grieving those feelings um, I I had my eyes closed, just crying my eyes out, and it was real deep grieving. Um, I um, I then felt this circle of um, sp spirits around me. So people on earth who have passed and are now in spirit form um, in the spirit world, I just felt this like I was in the middle of this big circle, and I just felt all these different spirits just around me in a circle. And I, f I just started feeling all of their love just entering me all at the same time. And then I, as that was happening, I was getting obviously more and more overwhelmed with it. And then that's when I was longing for God's love. And then God's love came in and that was even more obviously intense and I was completely overwhelmed. And I just let that experience happen and realising that God's just saying to me, look, I know what happened. I know the the damage that you've received um, and I'm going to help clear this from you to make you happier um, and I was, it almost felt to me like because it's a feeling but it's a feeling with your soul like you can see God but through feelings it's not you, you don't see you don't hear God's voice you don't see uh, an image of a person or uh, or God it's all through feeling so I was seeing with my soul perceptions what God, like the nature of God and what God was doing for me, like it was almost seemed like God was patting me on the back, just saying, it's fine, it's okay, just go through it. This is this is just an injury that you were brought up with that's been affecting your whole life. Just allow yourself to go through it. I will help you as much as I can. I will give you as much love as I can while you're feeling this. And as I let all of that happen, I stopped crying after the experience and I just sat there and I was thinking, and I was just, in shock again because every time I receive God's love I've just been shocked <clears throat> I've just been completely overwhelmed by the whole experience and I'm just thinking oh my goodness like God is just so amazing and God knows perfectly all of these things and I was um, for the first ever time I felt the women the, the womanly part of God the feminine part of God because um, usually on earth nowadays people see God as um, like a male, masculine, 
and Jesus says, Jesus and Mary say in their videos that God is both. God's got a masculine part and a feminine part. And I really found that difficult to intellectually assimilate, really did. Um, just because I must, I must have imbibed that injury as well in my heart, thinking God is just a masculine. And um, I, as I was just thinking about that stuff, the truth, God's truth entered me and I felt more of God's love come in and I felt just the feminine, just this so beautiful, raw, pure, feminine expression of God, the, this tender care, this nurturing part of God um, and just how much God wants to uh, help us and it, it felt like God was holding my hand and just guiding me through all of this pain that I had to feel mm. uh, to get myself close to God and it was just like God just leading me through it all and I just felt this real true womanly feminine part of God that I've never known my whole life <laughs> I've never known it my whole life I've never known that pureness of what a pure feminine expression of love is until that point and I realised that um, that God is both has both masculine and feminine parts, um, and yeah, I mean, like now I'm, I'm crying a bit because of it. Um, I've still got more sadness to go through. Um, so we, you know, we, you can see we're not we're not perfect. We've still got a lot of sadness, and the more we talk about our own experiences and go through these feelings, the more. These feelings leave us or release from us. The closer we'll become with God, and the more happy we'll be. And that's the process. You can't be happy all the time because that's not real. Um, you've got to go through the pain um, and let yourself experience it, and know that God will always be there for you when you are in that space. And having the faith that once you go through it and get out of that experience, that your life will be happier. And that's what I've learned so much about God, um, just how much God's there. Like, I can feel God now as I'm talking. Um, it's making me, uh, it's making me cry. Uh, so I'm just feeling how much God's there and just wants us to go through it all. Um, well, yeah, mate, you talk about your experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very much the same as Nikki. Um, and uh, uh, as Nikki was talking then and, and starting to cry a little bit, like, there's this, like, especially for guys, if any guys are watching, you know, there's, like, this big stigma that, like, you know, like, guys can't cry. And, um, it's, like, one of the things that you'll have to, like, you'll have to go through, you know, like, some, you know, the, the idea is that men are these big, you know, strong guys who, who don't show emotion. So, uh, that was one of the big blocks. I, I, I cried in front of my mum once, and it was, like, and it was only, what, maybe a couple of years ago, three, two or three years ago. And I really didn't want to let it happen because um, I had some shame about myself that I wanted to admit. Um, and as I was telling her, I could feel the, 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 the tears coming up. And I was like, I can't cry in front of my mom. You know, I can't show you, show her how weak I am. And, but I just couldn't hold it in. And the, the tears just came out of just how shameful I felt about myself. And once I got over that one, that was like one of the biggest hurdles. I was just like, oh, if I can cry in front of my mom. Now I can pretty much cry in front of anyone now, and at any time, and it doesn't doesn't really bother me. I don't feel um, like I'm not like I'm not a man because because I show my emotions. So if there are any guys watching and you feel intimidated to do that, then I can just think, you know I can only encourage you that like don't let it stop you. Um, it's a blockage essentially. It's just a block. Yeah. To uh, actually receiving God's love. And, and, and when you feel God's love, I, I experienced it the same as Nikki. You just, I, I, for me, my prayers initially were quite a lot of desperation because um, I had quite a lot of depression in, in my, my teenage years and 20s. And when, whenever I feel God's love, it just feels like these arms just swoop me up and cradle me and just let me know that, that I'm loved. And, and it's all to do with love. <laughs> and it's... It's so simple, and we, you know, we talk about love all the time. And anything what's happening in the world at the moment, in a negative way, is it's just because there's a lack of love there. And what I want to start doing is start leading my life in a loving way, so I can start to 
demonstrate like love in action um, but I can only do that perfectly if I feel what God feels about that because God created the universe and how everything works so you know it'll be a process of where I'll start and already start to demonstrate different areas of my life where I'm being more loving and people start to notice and ask questions why I do certain things and in the future I know that there's more things that I want to do uh, and by receiving God's love I will then be able to act in harmony with that so before I talked about this benchmark of love at the moment I've just got my version or my, my environment's ver version or my parents version but as I start to feel God's love about things I'll be able to act from a place that maybe a lot of the world haven't seen before so what's happening now in my life is I'm interacting with different people and they, they kind of like don't get what I mean or they don't understand why I would do a certain thing or act a certain way or say a certain thing because it conflicts their idea of, of, of what love is because there's, my feeling is there's, there's not a massive amount of people in the world at the moment acting in harmony with, with God's love. So, so I'm going through this person of process of watching you know, Jesus and Mary and going watching all the seminars and seeing how they live their life, see if it rings true, going away, practicing, seeing what happens in my own life with the suggestions and then witnessing, being my own witness to what happens and how my life changes and that just gives me the inspiration and the faith like, to want to do more. So that's kind of been my experience of the whole building my relationship with God and as I spoke with earlier you start to learn about God's characteristics and how God feels about you versus how you feel about yourself. And basically what I want to do is I just want to fill myself up with so much love that I eventually love myself with the same amount of passion and love as God loves me. And then at that point I'll become perfect. Someone said to me the other day, you can't become perfect. But I've got this strong feeling in me that I can become perfect. <laughs> I mean, don't become like so hard on yourself, you know, you're making small mistakes. And then you just, you know, batter yourself down because I'm quite accustomed to that as well. So, but I do believe that perfection can be attained. And just through this process of receiving God's love that one day I will become perfect. And then what that means will, every thought, feeling or action that I do will, will be loving. And so it means I can't destroy anything. I can't create a negative situation um, because I've got God's feeling about stuff and God doesn't destroy anything, it's just expansive, creating, growing, um, and it goes on for eternity. So with that in mind, that's the basis of, of how I want to live my life at the moment, and I've got ideas and plans in the future to um, make more things happen uh, in regarding love and helping people and stuff. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, one, can... um, one thing I'd like to say is that a lot of young people I'm 26. Um, a lot of young people see God and it's just really uncool. Like there's just this feeling. I feel a lot of young people have that God's uncool, and mm. it's almost like people shit like you, other young people try and shame you about God and like, mm. oh, why are you, you know, why are you bothered about like, why are you so bothered about God? And it, it's almost this feeling like it's not a cool thing to do. But like I find that really weird because if you look at the people or all, all these young people such as myself look up to all these music artists, these sports people, so many of them believe in God. Yeah. Because they're in their passions, they're in their desires and they know how much God uh, they know the gifts that God gave to them in that certain regard, in that aspect. And they have a lot of gratitude and thanks towards God for that. And they can understand and appreciate God's um, involvement in their life. And all these young, all these uh, people on their Facebook pages, their Instagram pages, these famous people, they so many of them say, oh, um, I thank God so much for thank this. Yeah. Thank God for this. Thank God for that. And then all these young people who idolise these famous people, they don't feel that. They don't feel that. They don't see yeah. that as truth. They're just like... Just want the fame bit. <laughs> yeah, it's like they just see the fame of it all and stuff. And um, and then, like, these people kind of... Themselves, they've got all these feelings about God. Like, they feel like, you know, if it's, it's not cool to 
to uh, love God or have a relationship with God. And I tell you for certain, God is the coolest. <laughs> God is the coolest being ever. Like God would, oh, like <laughs> God is the coolest being ever. Um, and you start the more you connect with God, the more you start understanding these things about God and just how amazing God is. So um, that's just something that mm. I would just love to bring up, just because I feel it's quite a common misconception about for for people, especially young young people, mm. about God. And I think also, like you're saying, like if then like teenagers watching and stuff, like I remember being a teenager and I, I didn't like it all. I didn't really have any role models. Um, and God can be your best role model ever. Because I know that when I was a teenager, I felt alone quite a bit and often quite scared about what was going to happen in my future. There's a lot of massive things happening. So if you haven't got anyone, or even if you have got someone, you know, especially if you haven't got anyone to talk to, I would definitely encourage to build this relationship with God and to take on board what we're saying because God will be your best friend and get you out of any dark space that you're in at the moment. Uh, I feel like just the, the amount of social media I see with young teenagers and and what's it called, like the selfie thing, what's going on, <laughs> you know, it feels like so many young people just want to be seen and be heard and be loved. And want approval. And, and attention and they're not, and, you know, so they're All these like, likes on Facebook and Instagram, yeah. they're all just for approval really. Yeah, and when, if you're a little youngster, a little teenager and uh, this rings true, you just like think about you know the addictions that that's happening and why why you want all this approval and um why do you want why is your self your own self-worth uh impacted by the amount of likes you get on facebook or the amount of likes you get on a picture of yourself on instagram it shouldn't be like that yeah and i know it's because you know you might you, you want to feel famous and stuff like that and you see like like you were saying earlier like you look at the celebrities and stuff um but believe me like drop all that don't don't strive to be famous for famous sake and going back to this like this cool thing that we were saying is if you can have a relationship with god look at some of the seminars that we've uh directed to through um through these videos and um, start to experience and you, you will from a young age start to develop this love for yourself and you, you won't need to do any of these things that everyone's doing in the world right now with social media and twitters and likes and stuff like that like everything will just come to you and one of my most favorite sayings is uh, I said it in the last video as well is seek first the kingdom of God and all else will be given and you will be given so much more than you even imagined of the, the amount of purity the joy that you will get will just make likes on Facebook, <laughs> you see him nothing, even fame and money and all that stuff, what you imagined. It's not to say that you won't get it, I'm not saying that you 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 know you follow God and then you won't become famous, that's not what or I'm saying. Or you won't have money. Yeah, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying, I'm saying it's like, that these things can come to you, but you'll have such a healthy way of dealing with all these things that you won't destroy yourself with them. I mean, as well as Nikki said, there's a lot of famous people who believe in God, and have a healthy relationship. Like you look at all a lot, a lot of the celebrities who often then kill themselves you know, through suicide or many different things, destroy themselves because all that, all, all the stuff that came was just fake and manufactured. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the feeling. It's not the real love in their in their hearts. Substance. So, it's in the substance of love that they've been yeah. seeking for a lot of their life, and they've been trying to get met through, you know, drugs and parties and women or whatever. It's. They get to a point where it's just too much for them and they don't know where else to go and mm. and that's where the only way you'll ever be fulfilled truly is if you have a relationship with God and you feel God's love because God's love is the one substance in the whole universe that can change your whole existence, your whole life and like uh, one thing definitely with me, I thought like when I thought of God, I thought oh my life's going to be restrictive now, I'm going to have to cut all of this stuff out that I've been doing, I'm going to have to stop drinking alcohol, I'm going to have to stop partying, I'm going to have to stop, you know, doing all of these things that I thought were real enjoyment, I thought I had to just chop all of that, but as over time, as I've got to um, learn more about God and feel God's love, I've started, like, you know, you get to a point where 
you, you don't want to do that stuff because you know it's not real, you feel it's not real, you feel um, you're actually probably going to be damaging yourself more by doing all of that, affecting your own relationship with God. And when you start feeling like you don't need it, you do get this sense of freedom, you feel this huge sense of freedom that, wow, like, I was just covering over all of this sadness that I actually feel about something that happened when I was a little kid. Uh, all feelings I've received from my parents that I've just been trying to mask my whole life. Um, and you get, it's not restriction, it's freedom when you get to a point where in your heart you don't need it anymore. It's just this amazing freedom and then all these other possibilities are, will open up to you and God will bring all these possibilities. Like God wants every single one of us to get to know ourselves and be the true expression of ourselves that God created to be. Like people of music talents, people are, have artistic abilities, people of some people of writing, you know, building, building. there's so many different facets of of what a person's true nature and personality is. And when you start connecting with what the real passions in your heart are, the ones that God put in your soul uh, specifically, and you connect with them, you'll get so much more joy out of that than any of all these other ways you're trying to seek satisfaction and enjoyment in your life. Um, like I, I, I used to drink a lot. I used to be a bartender. So I, I <laughs> sorry, <mate. laughs> drinking for me was a, a, a massive thing and drugs as well. I used to take not a ton of drugs. I wasn't you know addicted to drugs, but I used to take a lot of recreational drugs in my late teens and early twenties and now I just can't think of anything worse um, because I just know how damaging it is for me. In fact, I just don't have the desire for it anymore um, because I just want to be in harmony with love so there's just different things in my life that I've noticed the difference um, on how I behave and just in my, in my everyday life so yeah I don't know if you've, if there's much more you want to say on Development with God, um, relationship with God, or concept with God. I mean, there's a ton of stuff. There's so many stuff we could say about our yeah. own personal experiences with God uh, individually that we've had, and certain truths we've uh, come to learn about God that we went through a process individually about, mm. and we've come to the exact same conclusion. Um, and there's so so many more, um, but these were just a few of our big kind of experience with God and what we've learned about God, what God means to us, and. Um, I'm sure in future videos when we're discussing certain other areas of um, divine truth and principles then I'm sure we'll probably um, use some of our own examples to illustrate the points further yeah. and whatnot but this was kind of more of just a, a, a broad kind of summary as to who God is and what God's about and what God wants for us and and how it's the affected benefits, our life. How it's yeah. affected our life, the benefits we've been feeling as a result. And just putting it out there for anyone who's interested in conducting or attempting the great experiment. And yeah. I'm telling you, it, once you, if you let yourself have that initial faith that you need to just even entertain the idea that it's a possibility, it will be the greatest choice and decision and experiment you've you will ever ever make ever in your entire existence mm -hmm. and you will you will not look back from that point onwards and it's so worthwhile the frustration that you may you know people who are on who have been on the divine love path for a certain amount of time and they haven't yet experienced god's love i honestly the, the, the pain and the tri the trials and tribulations you're going through to remove the blocks, it is so worthwhile when you receive God's love the first time. It is just amazing and you will have such a breakthrough. And it, it's, I'm really excited to, for, for you to experience that when you do and you realize it's all true and what God means and what God's about. You will... Yeah you will be feeling absolutely incredible. So yeah. it's all about just persevering, looking at yourself truthfully as to how God sees you and just connecting with your real feeling because that's what we've done. This is the only reason, you know, we're nothing special. We're just normal people like you, um, like any of God's. we an experience which is, you know, it's blown us away as many times. 
we have conversations and we can't believe like some of the stuff that's happened from watching the seminars, putting it into practice, and it's actually happened. Yeah. Um, well, I, I just felt then to, to if anyone's watching to direct you to the uh, the Solomon's message. Oh, what, um, what which, a message! Jesus and Mary did a seminar. You can look on their channel for the Solomon's message. It's and a pageant message. The pageant message, yeah. Uh, oh, so they're, they're channeling a message from Solomon, that was right. Uh, James Paget yeah. channeled a message from, in, I think it was like 19 mm. something, 1918 or something, from uh, from Solomon, this spirit Solomon from the Bible, uh, King David, one of King David's sons, who was the king after King David. Um, Solomon came to James Paget and channeled through him a message um, and it goes something lo- along the lines of, if I remember, the, what is the greatest thing in all of the universe? And the first is um, faith and prayer on the part of the human and divine love on the part of God. The latter mm-hmm. is always there waiting and the first part allows it to enter into the souls of men. Yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> something on those lines. Yeah. I just tried. Probably yeah. my guide was helping me with that, and, yeah, then, and maybe Solomon's trying to help me with that as well. But um, and the, the beautiful thing for me at the end was because Nikki was touching on it just before I, I mentioned that was he says try and try again and try again. So it's like just keeps, keep don't on stop trying, trying. Don't, don't stop don't trying. Up. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. Because. Solomon is a bloke who's lived over 3,000 years, so he knows, he must know a thing or two about God and what he believes the most important things or the most important thing in the whole universe is. So, and he's a wise man, so I'll definitely go and trust that and just try it for yourself. Um, because I, through my experiences, I can say that what he said for me is extremely true. It's mm. extremely true. Faith and prayer on the part of the mortal and divine love on the part of God. And always realising that God's love is there constantly waiting and God's just waiting to give it to you. And the only thing that's stopping it is your own so your own soul, yourself, your own fears, your own feelings that block the reception. And just having that initial faith and prayer that opens your heart up to the potentiality of receiving it it, that is the steps to take to get yourself in a point where you can't receive it. So, um, so yeah, I think that's probably that. it. Yeah, thanks for listening. I'm not sure how how long that was. So if you watch the whole thing, then thank you. Uh, we will be doing more YouTube videos. So this is the second one, and um, we'll choose a different topic each time. So this one was a broad talk about God and a bit about prayer in there as well. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, we, uh, we hope that you got something from it, and you can always send us an email. Um, you can go to www.divinetruthhub.com um, to get in contact with us. And if you want to see any Jesus and marriage material, you can go to www.divinetruth.com, and there's just hours and hours of seminars that you can watch and go in more depth of some of the stuff that we talked about. And if you have any questions, you can email us and we can, you know. We'd love to help if help you we anyway. can. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for watching. And um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Bye.